Reporting in progress. Hi, students. In this lecture, we are going to solve problems based on Gauss law. See the first problem. So this question is taken from Irodo. See what is given. Inside an infinitely long circular cylinder charged uniformly with a volume density rho, there is a circular cylindrical cavity. The distance between the axis of the cylinder and the cavity is equal to A. Find the electric field strength E bar inside the cavity. The permittivity is assumed to be equal to unity. Okay. So there is an infinitely long cylinder which is charged in the volume. And there is now circular cylindrical cavity. Right. So how we solve this one? Let us now consider consider one cylinder. It is infinitely long. First, let us consider what is a field inside cylinder at a distance six. Okay from the axis, we want to calculate what is a field at a distance r, okay? So take one Gaussian surface. Here what we can see is by symmetry, field will be radially outwards, okay, like this, okay, radially outwards. So Gaussian surface must be, it is a, a cylinder, I am taking now a cylinder by taking that distance as radius, distance as radius. See flux passing through that. So writing here that closed integral E bar dot ds bar equal to charge enclosed by that upon epsilon naught. So now this becomes E into flux is only through curved part. I am repeating. Flux is only through curved part. There is no flux through this plane part. That top and bottom only through curved part. So it is now suppose length equal to L then this is surface area of the curved part 2 pi r l and that is equal to charge enclosed we are given here charge density that is a charge per unit volume so this can be taken as a row into corresponding volume <clears throat> it is a pi r square into l that is volume upon epsilon naught. Then see what we get. <clears throat> Pi gets cancelled, one hour gets cancelled, L gets cancelled. Remaining is now rho r by 2 epsilon naught. So this is now field inside a long cylinder which is uniformly charged in the entire world. Okay. Now coming to our problem. Coming to our problem. There is one long cylinder. There is one long cylinder. You can say bigger one. And inside that inside that there is one smaller one. 
the sales now acts as a bigger one. <clears throat> there is one smaller one inside. Let us take different color. One smaller one inside. And we are given distance between the axes. Between the axes, separation equal to A. Okay. Now, this can be taken as, if you remember, in earlier lecture, we have discussed, there is a cavity inside a sphere, and find the field inside that cavity. So, using now that same logic here also, this can be considered as one complete one, which has density plus rho. You can say it is a bigger one. It is a bigger one having density plus rho and smaller one having density minus rho. So when we combine these two, then that overlap region becomes a cavity. I am repeating, the cylinder having a cavity. This can be obtained by taking two cylinders. One is a bigger one and other one smaller one. Bigger one having charge density plus rho and smaller one having charge density minus rho. When we superimpose means when these two are overlap, in that overlap region that becomes a charge free. Okay. So this is now combination of two cylinders. Okay. And what I can say is due to bigger one. Now using this result in that one due to a bigger one, take it as E1 that is equal to rho R by 2 epsilon naught. Okay. Or we can say E1 bar equal to rho R1 bar. Okay. At one location inside. Right. Next. Because of because of the smaller one I can write it is rho r2 by, it should be minus because rho is negative, minus rho r2 by 2 epsilon naught. Now take resultant of this two. That gives us strength of the field inside cavity. That is equal to rho upon 2 epsilon naught r1 bar minus r2 bar. Okay, R1 bar minus R2 bar, right? And that can be taken as, that can be taken as, it is A bar, where modulus of A is separation between their axis. That means inside the cylindrical cavity, at each and every point field is uniform. And its direction is from Axis of the bigger one to axis of smaller one. Axis of bigger one to axis of a smaller one. Okay. So this is almost same as the previous question which we have discussed. Right. A spherical body contains a spherical cavity. So there we got rho upon 3 epsilon naught into R1 bar minus R2 bar. So we got same result. Only changes in the place of 3. We got here two. Okay. Right. Let us see the next problem. <clears throat> so this question is taken from previous IIT. Advanced 2017. See what the question given. A point charge plus Q is placed just outside an imaginary hemispherical surface of radius R as shown in the figure. Which of the following statements are correct? Okay. Right. Charge is kept just outside. Okay. And this is now imaginary hemispherical surface. Right. 
now see options the electric flux passing through the curved surface of the ms sphere is asking through curved surface next we have to find component of electric field normal to the flat surface is a constant over the surface component of electric field normal to the flat surface is a constant next total flux through curved and flat surfaces is a q by epsilon naught and last one the circumference of the flat surface is an equipotential surface see in this option c and option d we can verify directly total flux through curved and flat surfaces is q by epsilon naught we are knowing that because of outer charge because of outside charge there is no net flux through a closed surface right this is now outer charge that means it will be zero that means option c is not correct this we can see directly right next coming to here the circumference of the flat surface is an equipotential circumference of flat surface see this one if you see distance of any point on circumference distance of any point on circumference from this charge q is the same right from this point distance of any point on circumference is the same so distance is same means potential will be same so it is equipotential okay so option c not correct option d is correct so remaining we have to verify option a electric flux through curved part right and a component of electric field normal to flat surface right these two options we have to verify let us see right we have to calculate flux through curved part of hemisphere See, when we join this point like this, this forms one cone. And you can see this angle is a 45, right? So since that angle is a 45 for this cone, solid angle is, solid angle is 2 pi into 1 minus cos 45 that is solid angle right that is now solid angle now see what we can say <clears throat> whichever flux is crossing this flat part that flux is coming through curved part i am repeating any flux that is passing through the flat part is coming through the curved part. Therefore, both are same. Okay. So, this is now we got solid angle and we know that for 4 pi solid angle flux is a Q upon epsilon naught. So, for this solid angle, what is a flux? Okay. Then see how much we get. <clears throat> so, flux is equal to Q upon epsilon naught into this omega by 4 pi. Okay. And remember one more thing here. Flux is entering. Flux is entering the curved part. So we have discussed that whenever flux is leaving surface, we are taking that as a positive. If a flux enters the surface, that is taken as negative. So this will be negative. Okay. I am taking minus here. So minus sigma value substitute there. So 2 pi 4 pi remaining is 2. 
माइनस क्यू बाय टू एप्सलॉन नॉट सो रिमाइंडिंग इज वन माइनस कॉस फोर्टी फाइव मिस वन माइनस वन बाय रूट टू दैट इज नॉट फ्लक्स थ्रू करोड़ पार्ट एंड बाय बी हैव टेकन नेगेटिव मिंस यर फ्लक्स इज एंटरिंग द करोड़ पार्ट ओके राइट now we have to focus at any point on this flat part electric field okay let us see how to verify that option let us take here one that flat surface that circular base that circular base suppose we are taking one point somewhere here line joining the charge to that point with vertical makes angle theta okay this is charge q at this point i want to calculate what is the strength of the field okay so due to point charge field will be it is a k q by r square r square means distance of this point from this charge will be it is r by cos theta right that becomes hypotenuse so r by cos theta so k q by r square square of this and he is asking now normal component i am extending this like this that is a field it's a component normal to this this angle is a theta so into cos theta this is now component component of electric field normal to that flat part okay so in this we can say k q r square constants remaining theta value if you are changing theta value that a component is changing means on the base component of electric field normal to the plane is not a constant okay so options are so option 1 is correct option 2 it is given constant that is not correct c not correct and last one option d it is correct one. okay let us move on to next problem and this question also it is from previous iit see the question an infinitely long uniform line charge line charge distribution of charge per unit length lambda lies parallel to y axis this is that In fact, a long bar. Okay, this is a parallel to y-axis in the y-z plane at z equal to root three by two a. This is root three by two a. If the magnitude of flux of the electric field through the rectangular surface A B C D lying in the x-y plane. With its center at origin is lambda l by n epsilon naught. Then the value of n is this is at once two thousand fifteen. See diagram once. So we want to find now through this surface. Okay. Then see here what we can do. Let us. <clears throat> let us see how to solve it given from z root 3 by 2 ye right let us draw the one coaxial surface i am taking it is a cylinder it is a cylinder and see i am taking here x 
and this is a z and taking the x and z so y is towards us okay y is towards us that means in this this dot is now representing that long wire students follow carefully i have changed in our diagram so for our convenience so this is x and this is z and in the question given y is along y axis so y axis is now towards us okay so y is along y axis it looks like a looks like a dot okay now we are given one plane i will take different color to make it clear there is one rectangular plate that is placed here it's a distance given as from z axis right distance given as that is root 3 by 2a right distance and you can see let us mark this as center c and suppose the c is a and this is b okay and this is d i have taken okay i have changed rotations here right you can see here cd value root 3 by 2a that is given coming to bd value bd value is a right this is a if you join c to b or if you join c to a that angle becomes that angle becomes suppose theta so theta equal to wait this is actually total length is given a b given a right this is a by 2 okay so tan theta equal to a by 2 by tan theta equal to a by 2 by root 3 by 2 a that is now 1 by root 3 that is tan theta okay that implies theta value 30 if you observe if you are taking the complete cylinder then through the cylinder flux will be flux will be flux will be lambda l charge enclosed upon epsilon naught so if you are taking a cylinder of length l if through the entire cylinder flux passing is equal to lambda l this is a charge enclosed by cylinder upon epsilon naught but here now this angle is only 30 this is 30 and this is now 30 this total value is now this total value is now 60 okay for 2 pi this is now flux for 2 pi but this is now 60 therefore through this part, only one sixth of the flux will pass. <clears throat> I am repeating. If you are taking the complete one, means 2 pi, then flux will be this value q upon q upon epsilon naught. But if you are taking now this 30 and 30, total 60, through this 60, only one sixth will pass. That means flux will be q by. 6 epsilon naught only 1 sixth is passing 1 sixth because the angle is now 16. This is 1 sixth of 316. Okay. So n value equal to 3. That is our answer. Right. See next one. Okay. An elliptical cavity is carried within a perfect conductor a positive charge q is placed at the center of the cavity the points a and b are on the cavity on the cavity surface as shown so this question is given in 1999 for three marks okay let's see options so these options directly we can verify Electric field near A in the cavity equal to electric field near B in the cavity. 
if you see diagram a is closer to q compared to b therefore near a strength of the field is more therefore option a is not correct okay next one coming to charge density now this also not same because distances are not same that's why charge density also not same next coming to potential potential at a equal to potential at b okay. and you can see point a and point b are in the conductor and we are knowing that conductor is an equipotential region conductor is an equipotential region therefore their potentials must be the same okay so option 3 is clear correct total electric flux through the surface of the cavity is a q upon epsilon naught so it is directly right charge enclosed is a q therefore flux will be simply q upon epsilon naught asking total electric flux through the surface of cavity that is a correct one okay so options are C and D, right? Let us move on to the next problem. And this question also a previous IIT problem. See what is given. Two non-conducting solid spheres of radii R and 2R having uniform volume charge densities rho 1, rho 2 respectively touch each other. The net electric field at a distance to R from the center of the smaller sphere along the line joining the center of the spheres is 0. Then ratio rho 1 by rho 2 can be right now see carefully R to R density is rho 1 rho 2 we have to calculate net value distance to r from center of the smaller one okay let us see how to start the problem first write down the given data <clears throat> suppose this is a smaller one density rho 1 radius r okay now given other one that is bigger one and both are touching bigger one and both are touching okay charge density rho 2 Radius is 2R. Okay. Now on the line joining at a distance 2R, <laughs> net field equal to 0. Then see possibilities. 2R distance means one possibility left of this one. Okay. Left of this means that point. Suppose it is A. That point is now outside for both the spheres. And when you want to calculate a field because of spheres outside, okay. we can assume entire charge at its center. This is one point charge. This is one more point charge. So distance from here is a 2R, right? From here. From here, 2R means from center of the bigger one. This is a 2R. This is R, 3R. 3R plus 2R. It is a 5R. Total value, how much? 5R. Then see what we can write. <clears throat> so we can write because of a smaller one, K, Q value, rho 1 into 4 by 3 pi R Q, K Q by square of the distance. Distance is 2R. So 2R whole square. Okay, that field, imagine here unit positive charge. If this is repelling, the other has to attract. Okay, then only net value will be zero. 
right? <clears throat> that should be equal to that should be equal to because of bigger one k into rho two into four by three pi two r whole cube k cube by r square r is now it is a five r okay five r whole square remember here if i am taking pos two if bigger one is a pos two then smaller must be negative Okay, both cannot be same sign because if both are same sign, both will repel or both will attract. That is not possible. Second one, if bigger one pos two, definitely smaller must be negative. Then attraction will balance repulsion. Okay. Therefore, see from this k gets cancelled, r cube gets cancelled, 4 by 3 pi gets cancelled. Remaining is now r square gets cancelled row 1 by 2 square 4 that is equal to row 2 row 2 this is now 8 by 25 okay and here huh, one must be positive other must be negative then only it can be 0 okay it can be 0 therefore row 1 by row 2 should be it should be minus minus 32 by 25 minus 32 by 25 right okay now take the next possibility now next possibility if you are taking right off right off this is center okay center of a small one then that will be at a distance r from center of the bigger one. That means this point becomes inside the bigger one, but outside the smaller one, right? And field inside, I am writing here, field inside is equal to k cube by r cube into r. Okay, we have to use now this result for second case. <clears throat> then see what we get because of a smaller one it is outside point so k q value row 1 4 by 3 pi r cube row 1 4 by 3 pi r cube distance to r as usual so 2 r whole square that is balanced by now we have to use k q by r cube into r okay k Q value rho 2 into 4 by 3 pi sorry 4 by 3 pi right to 2 r whole cube into r by r cube it is a 2 r whole cube okay and remember <clears throat> at this point net value 0 means if this is repelling this also has to repel I am repeating, if this charge, if this is repelling this one, this also has to repel, then only directions are opposite, the net value can be zero. That means in this case, row one, row two must be same sign. So ratio will be positive. Okay. So K gets cancelled, 4 by 3 pi R cube gets cancelled. The man is now row one, row one by 4 is equal to <laughs> row 1 by 4 equal to row 2. We are having a 2 cube and here 2 cube gets cancelled. Right? Remaining is row 2, right? Only row 2. Nothing else left. That means it is row 1 by row 2 is equal to 4. Okay? So here we got a positive because both must be same sign. Then only both will repel or both will attract. Then net value is zero. But in this case, when you take outside, one has to attract, other has to repel. Okay, that's why the ratio is now negative sign. Right? <clears throat>